Money Feel Good Breakfast Show on this Friday. Happy Friday, but also happy spending money. Well, as the saying goes, home is where the heart is. But what happens if you want to buy a home or even rent it? Well, we need some advice this morning. Certified financial planner in studio, Grant Fonsay, welcome to the show. Oh, guys, thanks for having me. Let's think and talk about it. A one-bedroom flat, I want to buy it. It's valued at one million rand. Uh, I take all my money and I want to know the factors, the long-term and the short-time things to consider. What do I do? Okay, so I think the, the best starting point would be to get a CMA report. What's a CMA report? Well, your estate agent is probably not going to be too happy with you trying to get a CMA report, but basically what it's going to do is it's going to get you a good idea of what the valuation of that specific property is and the properties in the area, surrounding area. Um, from there, on a million rand property, if you approach the banks, you're most probably going to be getting an 80 to 90% bond. Um, that's going to cost you, if you're going over a 25-year period at a 9% interest rate, you're looking at about 7,500 rand a month. Another factor to consider is that you're going to have to finance 100,000 rand out of your own pocket. Transfer costs, bond registration costs and that sort of stuff are another 50,000 rand. So there's 150,000 rand that you need to come up with. Other costs that you need to consider is interest. Mm. So most people forget about this part. So if you take the bond uh, over the 25-year period, the property you're buying is a million rand, but you're paying 2.4 million rand. Other important factors is rates, levies, commission when you sell the property at a later stage, you need to factor that in. And yeah, so those are the things I would say are important. So it's all basically costs because you bought the property. You'd be lucky to get 9%. And you just talked about it. A 1 million rand property eventually will cost you around 2.4 million rand. But what if you want to rent it? I mean, what are, isn't it better? What are the costs involved if you had to rent the same property? Yeah, so I think renting, you're going you're gonna to be able to get a cheaper rate. You're most probably going to get a 1,000 rand discount on that sort of stuff. So... If you look at Nimbo.com, it's a great website for you to go have a look and get a valuation of what properties are selling for per square meter and what properties are renting for. Um, and then that will give you a good guideline. So over 25 years, are you saying that it is essential or better to, to buy than to rent? I mean, if you look at the two, uh, I also look at the rental income that I'll get. And as a property owner, I'm not extremely happy with 6,500 rand <laughs> a month yeah. on a million rand property. No. But would you rather say buy than rent? So there's actually two trains of thought. So you've got the, the guy that's not too savvy when it comes to investing. And the biggest investment they're ever going to make is buying a property. The problem with that is, you know, you're going to miss opportunity costs. So the second person is going to be your MBA sort of guy that says, you know, instead of me buying a property, let me take the 150,000 rand uh, cost that's going to cost me to buy this property up front and the 1,000 rand and save that. Mm. Then you're going to be coming out with about 9 million rand if you invest that at a 15% yeah. growth, which is very obtainable over a 25-year period. But then again, you get the other side of the coin, the guy that's not too savvy, he doesn't want to go and invest money or he has no clue about it. What he will do is he'll say, you know, I'm going to save money. So instead of me putting six and a half thousand rand away every single month at a growth rate of, let's say, seven percent to keep up with inflation, you're going to be spending about five million rand just on accommodation. You know, so but you feel like you've achieved when you bought a property. I think it's the thing that everyone wants to do. You get married, you buy a house, and then you hopefully have a baby or a little doggy. But what advice would you have for prospective buyers and even renters? Quickly. So, so I think for a buyer, I would say make sure that you get the best possible value. Make sure you do your research. Put in. Don't be scared to put in silly offers. Uh, try to get a 30 to 40 percent discount. Mm. And for renters, make sure that you become disciplined enough to actually put away the extra money that you have so that you can prepare yourself for the future. Okay, well, eventually you would have to buy that property, Grand Fund Sale, our certified financial advisor. I asked him how long he studied for that certified title and he said to me, eight years. Eight years of studying. Yeah, it's, it's a long time. It's a very time. long time. Yeah. Okay, but thanks for bringing your expertise to our studio this morning. <laughs> Buying versus renting. Of course, we always put details on our Facebook page, Expresso Show, S-A-B-C-3. Well, okay, thanks for the advice, Grant. Okay. Thank you so much. It is 2015, which means you need to maybe put it on your bucket list. Whether you are buying or selling a property, you just heard it. Sometimes it's better to save that money if you are uh, into rentals. And sometimes if you have the money, then spend it on buying. But it is time now for the news.